Previewing picks, Texas A&M minus three and a half on the road at Florida. Fellas, we were talking about this game. Um, if both teams would have won respectively in week one, this is probably where college game day would have gone, mm-hmm. um, down to Gainesville. Um, and, you know, instead, you have a one-loss Texas A&M team. You have a one-loss Florida team that – Let's talk about Florida for a second. Florida's riding the roller coaster, right? I mean, fans got to see DJ Lagway and loved him against Samford. And they've come out and said Graham Mertz is going to start this football game. And both Graham Mertz play. wasn't – both both are going to play. Yeah. I have a hard time believing – I'll put this right here. Put this – I don't know if you heard about this. Well, we're, we're going to do the – I think you did. I think I mentioned this on Monday or last Saturday during the live show in Georgia Tech. Sticky note stats. DJ Lagway is going to have to take the majority of the snaps for them to win to be able to win this football game. I, I think that that's my take. Like I think A and M wins this game. I think that they cover three and a half points, but they are going to have to play DJ Lagway, and that he had he has to be that. And I, I don't even think Graham Mertz is bad. I just think that he offers so much upside that you're gonna you would live and die with you'd live with the mistakes he's going to make as a true freshman. But that's kind of my take on this one. We can talk about it more. But just thoughts on Florida in general, will? Uh, yeah, I mean, this game all comes down to who's going to play quarterback for Florida. Uh, if they play both of them, to me, that just means that they have a plan that I think Merce will get the first drive and might see how it goes. Maybe the first two drives, see how they go, and then Lagway gets the third drive. Um, but then I think, I think Lagway will will be the guy moving forward. He he looked, he made some really good plays. I know it's Sanford last week, but he made some really good plays. Uh, 21 of 31, 487 yards, three touchdowns. Uh, and I'm with you. I don't think Graham Mertz is a, a bad quarterback. He just doesn't make those dynamic plays. Graham Mertz is not going to throw for 487 yards on anybody. I don't I don't see. I don't think so. It'd have to be an unreal receiving core in yards after the catch for him to be able to do that. Yes, yes. So, I mean, the upside, saying the same thing you did, the upside with Lagway is, is what's going to have them win this game. Um I think this is going to be a defensive struggle. Uh, I do. I think both of these defenses are are really, really good. Um, and I can't, I can't, I can't bet against Florida in the swamp. So give me Florida plus three and a half. I think this is going to be a tight game, a field goal come down to a field goal uh, game, and Florida probably probably covers this game by that hook. Um, home field advantage it means it means a ton in college football, and and Florida has one of the best. No matter, it's not too it's not too late in the year. The wheels haven't fallen off. The fans haven't totally given up. So they're going to be there. They're going to be loud. They're going to be the twelfth man for Florida, and, and they're going to keep it close. Yeah, you just you just pissed off a bunch of A and M fans saying the twelfth man there. Yeah, you did. Uh, Lagway feels. I don't know. I have no clue. Uh, Lagway fan. Lagway feels like an admission. Ken says that this year is just more rebuilding, which it is. But can UF fans handle that admission? They don't probably want to, but Lagway's the future, and I think he's going to be a stud if he stays in Gainesville. That'll be something big, too. Yeah. Uh, Ralph, your thoughts on this game? Look, I mean, I completely agree with Will. Uh, but honestly, if Billy Napier's smart, he wants to get this crowd behind this team early in the game. That first drive offensively, you walk out DJ Lagway out there. I don't care about what Graham Burks has done for this team and being a leader. You want this crowd to get excited. Lagway starts that game. You you bring Mertz in late, maybe occasionally if, if he's struggling, but Lagway walks out there. He gets this crowd hyped up. They score in that first drive. This place is going to erupt, and you have this full fan base behind you against a really good A and M team that struggled week one offensively, but still looked really good defensively. And A and M honestly, they just need to bounce back. This is like I know they had a good game last, but they played really nobody. But this is a this is the game like okay you're on the road hostile environment you know new coaching staff Connor Wegman's got to play his best game yeah this is where Connor no. Wegman has to be we have to see it like we didn't see it week one you got banged up week two you don't really you don't really get much information off of him so this is where it is this is where we're sitting here now is is Wegman going to be the guy for them this year and next year you know I just don't I want to see it I mean the run game's been good Le'Veon uh, Mel, Moss. If I'm correct on one. Yeah, Le'Veon Moss has ran the ball really well this year. Um, you know, Cyrus Allen looks good as a receiver. I just – I know their defense is good. I know they can stop them. I just don't know that the offense can score enough points to really, you know, put this game away. 
I'm with Will. I'm taking Florida to cover, you know, and I wouldn't be surprised if they won. Yeah, you, you brought up an interesting point, Connor Wegman. You didn't learn a lot against him. Uh, he wasn't really used against McNeese last week. And the, the one thing I'm, I'm watching for, because A&M still has some dynamic weapons on the outside and Le'Veon Moss, like you talked about, is Miami showed you that Florida is very vulnerable over the top and over the middle of the field. And if they capitalize that, remember this is Colin Klein, you know, being the play caller, just his third game down there in College Station. If they, if they can show they can do that, I think a m wins this game and covers. Like that's why I said that. But because I, I think Miami gave you enough enough tape. Now it's it could be a battle of the quarterbacks. I mean, there's a lot of other players, you know, kind of in this. But I also this the idea of DJ Lagway for me. It just raises the ceiling of this Florida team. I, I didn't think Florida's ceiling was very high coming into the year, but specifically with this game, this feels like a must get game for Florida if you want to get bowl eligibility and if you're Billy Napier and you want to keep your job. So like Will or right, like Ralph said. I don't know if just running him out there because the biggest thing is you have to see is, hey, can he do that against SEC competition? Jumping from the SOCON to the SEC is a massive jump, but you got to figure out because with Billy Napier, you may not have next year or you may not have week 10, 11, and 12 to really kind of figure things out. So I think it raises the floor and the ceiling of what Florida could accomplish in this game. Yeah, this is also a huge game for Connor Wegman. Like you said, we've seen him go on the road last year against Miami, and it it wasn't great. That was an ugly defensive struggle too uh, that Miami – ended up winning um but i really you bring up a great point talking about miami putting on tape what you can do against yeah. florida defense and connor wegman is a quarterback i've gone to bat for a lot i think he's a really good quarterback he struggled to stay healthy but if he goes out and can't perform against florida i think the con at least for me the narrative is going to change on him that you know he's not as good as i thought he was yeah. um because he, he he wasn't great against Notre Dame, and if he comes out and does it again against Florida, there's going to be a lot of questions asked about him. And I think I'm sure Aggie fans will be asking those as well. Like, how can we not beat Florida? Florida is a mess. Yeah. So a mess that has nothing is, to lose. You know. They. You know what I think Florida is, really doesn't. Florida really doesn't have anything to lose. They don't. Um. You know what I think is a sneaky pick right here if you were doing a best bet the over at 46 and a half because of what we just talked about. I think AM could put up some points in this one. I don't know if Florida could keep up with them, but I think that they could mm-hmm. put up points if you're the Aggies. Yeah, I just – I mean, I just think I kind of had written down here in some notes. Also, too, like how many times have we really seen a two-quarterback splitting reps, splitting drives – really keep you it in never works of, it just doesn't work so it i think that works. would that would allow for more volatile situations like more inconsistencies hey, you got to pick a guy and go with it speaking of oh, new God. mexico plus 28 because auburn's playing two quarterbacks on saturday is that your best I hope bet? So. no i hope so for you. <laughs> um it is not yeah. it, it was it was a finalist for that but uh yeah like i said two quarterbacks they don't work i've i've seen it too much the last 10 years at Auburn, it yeah. doesn't work. It does you, especially when you have two quarterbacks. Ken's exactly right. If you have two QBs, you have no QB. That's right. And especially when you've got a guy that's a traditional pocket passer like Graham Mertz, and then more of a dual threat guy in Lagway. Because if you run Lagway out there, they're just going to load eight in the box and make him prove that he can throw the ball. And yeah. you take away his biggest weapon, which is his legs. So it it doesn't really it it usually never works. Yeah, no, I'm with you. Although I'm with you, Florida has made it work in the past. Chris that Lee, Chris Tim Leak Tim Tebow combo was pretty nice. That worked um, out pretty nicely. 